Hello, hello, and welcome to Martinis and Bikinis, the podcast for everything under the sun. I am your hostess, Veronica Julia, and I am here to help you navigate your 20s through all things lifestyle, beauty, and fashion. So if you're ready, let's dive into today's episode. Hi, Allie. Hi, Veronica. How are you? I am well. How are you? I'm, I'm really excited doing to fantastic. be here. I'm just so excited that you're here. Uh, me too. Me too. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So we met a few months ago. We did. And yes. we were actually at an event mm-hmm. for Christina Carmona, yep. aka yep, yep. the founder of Island yep. East Side for her candle making mm-hmm. class with Awaken Your Goddess. Mm-hmm. And that's where I met you yeah. and just a lot of other lovely, amazing, yes. talented ladies. Yeah. And yeah, here we are. I know. And here we are. And I was so drawn to you and what you did at the event just because, you know, it just martinis and bikinis just screams my name. Yes, so it does. I was like, I need to know more about her. So. I know. It's so funny because whenever I usually ask my guests what their drink mm-hmm. choice is, a lot of the times they don't like martinis. Really? Like a typical martini. Like not just like a drink up. Like they uh-huh. just don't like the typical things that go in a martini yeah. glass. So whenever you said oh, I would love an extra dirty martini. I was like, yes. Emphasis on the extra dirty. A girl after my own heart. (laughs) Seriously, it's been a while since we've had a dirty martini on the show. So Uh, so should we cheer? Yes, yes, absolutely. So I usually like to start, cheers. Cheers. (laughs) I usually like to start these episodes off with learning more about the guest and just like the more vulnerable sides of them, I guess. Also, your upbringing and just how you got to where you are today. Sure. And I think it's so cool to listen to those stories because I feel like we all have such unique experiences, yet nobody has ever had like a truly unique experience. And it really helps people resonate with the guests. For sure. So I'm really excited to learn more about you. Yes. yes. And how I got to to being this feminine embodiment coach. I know. I know. I'm sure it was a crazy ride. <laughs> I'm saddling up. Get ready. Saddling Buckle up. up. Ready? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, you know, I grew up on Long Island, born and raised, Long Island girl, um, you know, had a very typical upbringing you know had great parents a great family we're so close I actually have a twin sister she's like my built-in best friend yeah so yeah so really you know a lot of love and everything um are you guys identical no we're fraternal we're so different we're so different I love that though but we're like we complement each other we're so different but that's almost why we mesh so well incredible yeah yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of, you know, foreshadowing what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> <laughs> the balance. Um, so, yeah, I mean, on the outside, you know, my life was great. I, you know, was captain of my cheerleading team, got to a good college and was in the business school and had, you know, a really good major, was president of my sorority, you know, went to, got a job right out of college at a very well-known retailer and you know everything like I said on the outside seemed pretty fantastic yeah it sounds fantastic yeah (laughs) like very picture perfect yes however on the inside I had so much anxiety I had so much overwhelm and you know it got to a point where you know between things that were happening in, you know, college and school and, you know, dating really. Oh, I love dating yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I do it all the time. Shitty (laughs) men. Oh, no, I literally drop like the F-bomb like every Oh, excellent. Okay, great. This will be fun. (laughs) Oh, great, great, great. Well, let me take another sip of my martini. Absolutely. Yeah, literally no rules. No rules at all. I love it. I love it. So um, dated a lot of shitty men. A lot of very different men, but each one of them was just not fulfilling me and the relationships just were not, I just left with feeling unfulfilled and so much anxiety and just feeling so, you know, alone, which is an awful way to feel when you're in a partnership. So it got to the point, this anxiety and overwhelm that I literally was on the Long Island Railroad, just going to work, minding my own business, and I 
fainted, like completely just like blacked out on the Long Island Railroad, just, just sitting there. And it was such an aha moment for me because I was like, clearly there's something wrong. I don't know what it is, but like something isn't right. And literally for me to just black out on the Long Island Railroad. So that's kind of where I started, you know, I, I dove right into therapy and I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I know that there's something wrong and I want to figure it out. And as I was going to therapy, I started really doing a lot of self-reflection. And one of the most amazing things that happened when I was in therapy is she asked me, you know, we're just talking about life. And she asked me, well, do you like that? Is that what you want? And it was the first time ever where I was actually like, wow, no one has ever asked me that before. And as through my work and, and you know, and everything and the self-reflection, I've realized that my entire life was based around putting other people first, doing what I thought was right, doing what I thought I was meant to do for my parents, for society, for, you know, my religion. And all of it kind of just caught up to me right? The people pleasing, the perfectionists, I'm sure, you know, we've all heard that, really all caught up to me. And my body was finally telling me like, no more, that you really need to just change. Right. Yeah. So when you fainted on the mm -hmm. railroad, yeah, on the Long Island Railroad, do you feel like that was almost like the stress in your body reacting? Yes. 100%. So like all of this like harboring that you've yep. done throughout your life? 100%. 100%. Wow. And it, it's not, you know, and that's why when people ask me how I got into this work, it's like not one thing that happened. Like that was probably the, the, the catalyst that kind of shifted me into like, okay, I need, you know, I need to like start on this path of, you know, growth and personal development and, and just realigning like my priorities and who I am and learning about who I am because yeah. I didn't know who I was. I just knew who I was based on what everyone else wanted from me. Right. So. And I think sometimes people think doing the inner work or healing or focusing on themselves yeah. is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And even myself and what I've seen through people that are close to me yeah. is sometimes people feel like they've done the work, but they still have that people pleasing mentality and they're still kind of like committed to the judgments of other people. Yep. So I feel like it really takes, like it's sad, but it takes a moment like that to be like, yeah. I really need to hone in on this. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like really, it was a blessing in disguise. It really was. So, yeah. you know, I'm grateful. It was embarrassing, literally, yeah. like, waking up on the train and everyone's around you and they're like, honey, are you okay? I'm like, what just happened? Yeah, it was like, you know, that was, you know, not a fun moment. But it really, you know, looking back on it, I'm so grateful for that moment because it really, like, catapulted me into this version of myself. Right. Which I love. Yes. So. I've had a fainting in public moment, too, so... I know how you feel. Isn't it so like it's humiliating? Yes. <laughs> it's like your body just rejecting whatever is happening. I and know. yeah, yeah. And it's you such can't a control yeah. it. I know. It's such a vulnerable moment. Yeah, it's absolutely. like, you know. Well, I'm sorry that happened. But oh, I am you. so just impressed with how you've transitioned into thank you. feminine energy, embodiment, mm -hmm. coaching, all mm -hmm. the things. So maybe in like preschool terms, mm -hmm. how would you describe feminine energy to somebody that is like, that sounds like a bunch of woo woo shit. Like how, <laughs> how do I apply that to my life? Yes. So the term sounds woo woo, but if you think about it, right, it's like really is just an energy. Mm -hmm. And whenever I talk about feminine energy, I always like to talk about masculine energy because I feel like you understand it better when you, when you notice what the difference are. So before I start saying anything, like first thing that I want to say is that we all have feminine energy. We all do. Men, women, doesn't matter because it truly is just an energy. It's not, you know, oh, well, you're a man, so you have to be masculine. No, that's not necessarily yeah. true. 
or vice versa. Like there's a lot of connotations. Yes, a lot of connotations, a lot of connotations. So putting that out there, we all have masculine feminine energy. So when you think about masculine energy and what it really is, masculine energy is that doing energy. It's that achieving. It's that giving. It's that structure, right? And if you hear all of those words, it feels very like, you know, when I think of masculine energy, it's like a straight line. It's very like external, penetrating, this like moving forward energy. Whereas feminine energy is a lot more just internal. It's very, it's receiving. It is creating. It is intuition. It is, you know, that, that sensuality. So if that masculine energy is the straight line, feminine energy is kind of like a spiral. It's a lot freer. It's a lot flowier. Yeah. Well, you know, they say that like women are, I don't know how true this is, <laughs> are better at multitasking. And I think it's because of like the nurturing spirit yep. that an yep. anatomically wise we have. So I don't know if that contributes to like the feminine energy aspect of like being like kind of this like tunnel of different yeah. things and yeah, yeah. well because you Not know the straight line yes yeah. because with feminine energy we tend to be more open with right so think about it this way masculine energy they have a goal they know how to get the and they like they have a goal and they know how to get there mm -hmm. and they are going there feminine energy has the goal but we don't know how we're going to get there. We're just going to we're just going to ride the wave and we're going to flow life. and flow through life. <laughs> now like but if you think about it and it's kind of like why we're laughing because it's like oh yeah it seems so nice and flowing through life, but if we don't have that structure then it's just chaos. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're just like oh my god, which I'm sure you have felt in your own life in your own body like just pure chaos which yeah. is like <laughs> I feel like productive. I actually have a lot of masculine energy mm -hmm. but it's I think it's I don't know if you're into just zodiacs yeah. and horoscopes mm -hmm. and all that but I'm a Capricorn so um, we're very work driven yeah and I don't know if I necessarily I've watched a lot of debunking videos on <laughs> astrology so I don't know how I actually feel about it I feel like sometimes we like read that about ourselves and then we like learn as like a kid like what our zodiac is and then we just like make it a part of us <laughs> that's that's my theory could be. on it could, totally could but be. I still believe in it yeah 100%. I just feel like it's like a different track but I feel like I've always been very motivated to get like you know to a dream of mine or mm -hmm. just really straight lined into yeah. starting a business or mm -hmm. you know getting clients or you know fostering a community like I'm just like I have to get there yeah and you know I think it's great that you work with people that are looking to balance those mm -hmm. things yeah 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 because I feel like we all have both parts to ourselves totally and the reason the real reason why I got into feminine energy was because I too had so much masculine energy I and it's no fault to either of us like as a society our masculine energy is nurtured within us, right? Because masculine energy produces, it makes people money, like, you know, so everyone is constantly like on the go, you gotta do, you gotta, you know. And the part of ourselves and society that kind of sits on the back burner is that feminine nature, Yeah, is that feminine energy. So how I got into this feminine embodiment work was because I was just, constantly on the go going doing but I wasn't taking a step back to say well where should I be going an analogy that I love to use when talking about masculine and feminine energy is an architect and a builder right you can't build a building without a blueprint the feminine energy is the blueprint the masculine energy is what takes the blueprint and goes out and creates something. So the feminine energy is that idea, that creative spark, that download, whatever you want to call it. And then the masculine energy takes that and brings it to life. I love that. Yeah. Or another analogy to say that is a ship. So the masculine energy is the ship, right? 
The ship takes you from point A to point B. But if you don't have an ocean, the ship isn't going anywhere. Yeah. So you need that, you know, masculine energy creates life, but feminine energy is what's what creates your life of value. Yeah, the purpose. The purpose of it. Wow. So that is why I was so filled with anxiety because I was just doing and doing and going and the people pleasing and, you know, doing things for other people and not taking that second to say, well, what do I want? Where do I want to go? Yeah. Yeah. So what was like the first thing that you did whenever your therapist was telling you, Mm -hmm. hey, like, why are you doing this? Are you enjoying this? Yeah. What was like that step into like feminine embodiment coaching? Like what got you there? Because I feel like it's so unique. (laughs) Yes. So I always say feminine embodiment found me. I didn't find (laughs) it. (laughs) And I know that sounds like so woo woo, but it's true. And when you are constantly in this state of like overwhelm and stress, when you find those things that light you up, it is like, it just consumes you. And there were so many moments where, you know, I would come across someone on Instagram who would do this type of work. I would come across, you know, an article that talked about masculine and feminine energy. It was just all these little things that was pointing me in that direction. But every single time I felt this, this pull, pull, this, you know, something that I love to talk about is this turn on, right? It turned me on not necessarily sexually, but turned me on, turned my heart on, turned my soul on, right? It's like, it like sparked that fire in me. So I was like, I know nothing about it. I don't know what this is or who this is or what, but I just, I need to learn more. And it's just, it was constantly following those little sparks that got me to where I am today. (laughs) That's amazing. I feel like a lot of people don't follow their fate or their destiny. You know, sometimes they reject it or they feel like, you know, maybe wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. And they don't pursue it. Yeah. So I think it's like really admirable that I get to have people like you mm-hmm. on the show to talk about following that unconventionality. And I think it's absolutely incredible. Oh, thank you. So thank I would you. like love to talk about feminine energy uh-huh. within like relationships, whether yes. it's like your personal life or mm-hmm. family life or oh, yeah. even when it comes to dating. So I know that you talk about on your platform Mm -hmm. how sometimes we attract the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And I know you mentioned in like your previous years that that's what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel like made that switch for you? Or like what advice would you give to somebody that is struggling with always choosing the wrong person? Because I know so many people like that. I've done it before. We've all been there. Um... But I think it's really, really amazing that that's the work that you're doing because, again, energy is so big. And Mm -hmm. if we're surrounding ourselves with people that are pulling down our energy, it's not going to get us anywhere. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, this may be the obvious answer, but first you need to figure out what you want. And that seems so simple, but it really is hard right? When was the last time that you actually sat and thought about like what you want, what you in your heart wants, right? I feel like that's not something that we do a lot of times. We're we're just like going on to the next thing and doing, taking a step and actually thinking about what you want. And then once you figure out what you want, it's about realizing all of the ways that you block yourself from achieving that or from receiving that. So, you know, something that I posted recently was about these masks that we wear and specifically feminine masks because it's these identities that we, you know, that we bring upon ourselves or that we, um, you know, these identities that we really take on that are actually blocking us from getting what we want. And nine times out of ten, you think about what you want. Like, it's really just love and unconditional love. So the first mask that we tend to wear as women, and all of these are like, 
things that are like known that we are loved that people love about other women um so the first one is the independent boss babe <laughs> i know i love it <laughs> and let me tell you that you know, I strove to be the independent boss, babe. Like that was my goal. Like that is who I wanted. I didn't need no man. You know, you know the song Independent Woman by Destiny's Child? Oh yeah. Duh, we all know it, all love it. <laughs> but my goal was every single thing that they said, the shoes on my feet, what do they say? The shoes on my feet, <laughs> the, the car I'm driving, like oh, yeah, all of yeah. those things, yeah. I wanted to get that for myself. That was my goal. My goal was to like check all those off the list. Mm -hmm. The crazy part was once I checked all of them off the list, I still wasn't happy because there was still that part of me that, you know, was almost using that, that independent boss babe energy to not open myself up, to not ask for help and not have that experience of being nurtured and you know, taken care of by a partner. So this independent boss babe that we all love is really, you know, and she has her time and place. Like, I think she's fantastic, but you need to be able to turn her off and to share ourselves on a date, to share our hearts, to share our, our mess and our imperfections instead of pretending that, nope, I got it. Like, I'm I'm independent. I don't need anyone. I got it all taken care of. I think sometimes people, especially women, are really terrified to talk about, like, their careers or mm -hmm. accolades or anything like that because it gives off this vibe as that they don't need anybody, you know, yep. because they can take care of themselves. Yeah. And I feel like we're now living in a world where women play a lot of different roles and wear a lot of different hats. Yeah. And it's hard because you're expected to be so many different things. Yeah. And yeah, I feel like that's such a common mask nowadays mm -hmm. because people feel this need to be one thing or like at yeah. least like, you know, have this one persona that yeah. they give off and they, that yeah. they radiate after being a lot of different things. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like it's 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 tricky for a lot of people. It is. Including myself. Yeah. Oh, same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an embodiment coach, but I still she still comes out. These are still parts of me that, you know, that still come out. However, I recognize it and I'm like, oh okay. Like let me take a step back. Let me take a breath. You know, a lot of feminine energy is getting out of your head and getting back in tune into your body and then you can move forward so I do oh my gosh my voice <laughs> lost my voice last week um <laughs> I went to an event with number seven and mm. Elizabeth Banks is now their celebrity spokesperson mm -hmm. I got to sit down on a conversation with her mm. and she said something that really stuck with me she said instead of harboring guilt why don't we just give up this need to control everything? Amen. And I loved that. Yeah. I want to tattoo it on my body. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. Because like, but if you think about it, like control is really just a way to not, it, it, it's just our way to protect ourselves. It's just our way to put on this, you know, for lack of a better word, mask. So we don't have to share our hearts and be open and be, vulnerable with someone because when we are guess what someone can hurt us and that like that's scary as hell so yeah. what are some other masks <laughs> so um the other mask another mask is the caretaker mm. and I know a lot of the women I work with who are mothers and wives and you know they resonate with this so deeply and it is the woman who is constantly giving is constantly putting others before herself. And people love her because she makes fe people feel seen and she makes people feel good about themselves. But the problem is, is that a lot of times when we take on this caretaker role, who's taking care of us? And we're not allowing other people to take care of us either. We're pouring from an empty cup, right? They always say that you can't like, you have to put on your oxygen mask first before you help someone else. Well, where's your oxygen mask? Because you're you're just you're completely empty. Yeah. 
and that that is so common with not just mothers, but like with just all women in general, oh, just yeah. doing everything. I, I know <laughs> so many people that you know will care for their partners in a way that is overly motherly, mm. and nobody wants to fuck their mom. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> No you think you, you could find someone that <laughs> reminds them of their mom and yeah. like all the great qualities that they have, but like you know, you have to be willing to like let people take care of themselves too, yes. so you can take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. So whenever you're filling everyone else's cup, it's hard to fill right, it. right. And I love what you said that you know, because sometimes you don't even recognize that you're you're wearing these masks, but think about the type of guys that you're attracting. Right. So if you're if you're attracting someone who's very needy, who you're, you know, isn't really pulling their weight in the relationship, then think about what type of person that you're being. Like, what are you doing that is almost attracting that type of person or is that that is enabling that type of behavior within them? Yeah. And why are you doing it? Why are you taking care of someone like that when, you know, why are you putting everyone else's needs before your own? Right why yeah right so what do you think are some like key differentiators between masculine and feminine energy like what are like the telltale signs that somebody is harboring too much masculine energy or somebody's harboring like too much feminine energy like what's the first thing that you would notice in a client or someone in passing like in a conversation mm -hmm. where you're like oh I know, I know what your deal is <laughs> that's like the first thing that comes to mind for you so I feel like that's a twofold question because it's when I, what I see in other people and then what I see in myself, right? Mm -hmm. And it all comes down to me because the reason why the reason why you can see it in other people is because you can see it in yourself. So for me, masculine energy is okay. Let me let me back up for a second. So I think it's really important to understand that we all have a dominant a dominant energy that aligns most with us right and i i said that in the beginning i said that you know it doesn't have to do with gender it just has to do with the energy so there is a certain energy within us that feels best so for me that's feminine energy when i am too much in my masculine energy i tend to get awful headaches because I'm thinking so much in my head. I tend to have a lot of anxiety because I'm worried and I'm, I'm too concerned about what's going on in the future. I, I tend to be very like jittery when I'm too much in my, my masculine energy. I quite literally feel tension in my body. My body language tends to be a little more like, you know, contracted versus just like a little relaxed, right? Mm -hmm. So thinking about someone with masculine energy it's, you know, there's the physical signs of just, you know, they're, they're, you know, you could tell when someone has an anxious energy, right? You could oh. tell when someone is, or overthinking, or their mind, brain is going a mile a minute. Because it rubs off on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and also, they're just so focused on the outcome, and they're so focused on the control, and they're so focused on instead of flowing with the situation, they're so focused on making sure it's right. Now, that might be okay if masculine energy is your aligned energy, right? But if it's not, then, you know, usually there's a physical, a physical, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a physical uh, like side effect, yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better term. Yeah. Too much feminine energy, though, is kind of, the opposite there's also a physical effect on you and even a physical effect on me but I tend to just be not able to make a decision I tend to be so like ungrounded and so just like you know like a space cadet <laughs> <laughs> kind of because yeah. I'm just like I don't know what I want. I don't know what to do. Like, I just want to flow. I tend to also be very lazy. I'm going to be real. Like, <laughs> because I'm like, right. Because I'm like, I just want to flow. Like, don't put me in a box. But then sometimes like, you know, then all of a sudden I look at the clock and I'm like, oh my God, it's like, you know, I, I, I should have started work two hours ago. Like, yeah. what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> 
So too much feminine energy. It's like a haze. Yeah. It's like very hazy. And when I see that in clients, it's usually very like they almost have no structure. They have all these ideas, but they don't do anything about it. They have all this, you know, they tend to be very, um, like, let me see. Yeah, it's just. Like those are the helpers. Yeah. The people that are giving people the good ideas, but should be utilizing Ex- themselves. Right, exactly. Yeah. And just, and very like, oh, I'll just wait till the last minute. Oh, whatever, I'll just do it. And it's like, eh, that may not be the best may not be the best thing to do so you have to be tactical sometimes exactly yeah you need both you need both let me tell you like but masculine energy turns me on so much because you cannot be your feminine self without that masculine container right so like when I see you know good business systems when I see I know I know it sounds so crazy but like when I see a business that like is run really, really well and has great systems in place. When I see, you know, people who have contracts and they're like, oh, this is what we're going to do. When I see people who have, you know, or even my partner, when my partner just sits with me and is so present with me that he can literally stare into my soul and I'm able to just be. Yeah, be yourself. Like, that to me yes because that to me turns me on because when you have that structure you have that safety you have that stability where you can just uh, exhale and relax and flow and you don't have to think about where you're going or what you're doing because other people got that you can just be you right and be yourself I love that and I love that you're talking about like the turn-ons and yeah. masculine and feminine energy when it comes to dating and the checks and balances of that. Mm-hmm. So I know we had mentioned this a little bit earlier, but when it comes to finding the right person or attributes you should look for whenever you are are dating, mm-hmm. what are some good signs that you could steer women in to, or anyone in, to look for the right person? Or like the person that compliments them the best based on their given energy. Mm -hmm. So there is a term, a woo-woo term. It's called wounded masculine and wounded feminine. Mm. Have you heard of it? No. Okay. So with everything in life, there's always a, a healthy side and a not healthy side. Just as with masculine energy, there is healthy masculine energy and unhealthy which is wounded same thing with feminine energy so if you are a woman looking to find a healthy masculine man the things that you look for is presence you look for you know so when you look for someone who can be present with you instead of trying to control you or control the situation a man who can be open with you and straightforward with you and not play any type of games and a man who can have a real conversation without being that you know that macho masculine like aggressive it's right when you think of that wounded masculine energy that's kind of when what you think about when I you know I really feel for men I really really do because I feel like they get such a bad rep oh same yeah they get such a bad rep because like there's this energy that's just like yeah men are you know are aggressive and men are just you know the competitive and I like know all these women things. like that yeah <laughs> I know way more women like that honestly <laughs> oh my god it's so true but like yeah. women can have wounded masculine energy too exactly yeah it's everybody it is it there's is. no reason to like just completely tear off yeah you know one side and yes. be like, this is not how they are and this is how they right you know I think everybody kind of has that blend of different characteristics Mm -hmm. and we just have to recognize them for what they are yeah absolutely so it's really this just this feeling of just it's it's secure they're present they are open to you they don't try to fix you or change you or control 
it's very grounded and grounded and secure. Whereas wounded feminine energy is passive. She's very, you know, doesn't express herself, is the people pleaser. She is, you know, the woman who's just like, yeah, like, whatever, I don't have any needs. She's really this very deeply insecure. So just as much as we need to look for men who have these healthy qualities, we also need to check ourselves and say, well, what qualities do I have where I'm not, you know, attracting that type of healthy man? Because if I'm deeply insecure, then you're going to attract someone who's also, you know, insecure or someone who's controlling mm -hmm. because you're not able to stand up for yourself. Right. You know, it's all this like, it's like a puzzle. <laughs> now I'm like worried about myself because I can be so like go with the flow, Fiona. Like that could yeah, literally yeah, yeah. be me any given time. But then there's times where, you know, I know exactly what I want. And mm -hmm. I think, do you feel like it ebbs and flows throughout life? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally ebbs and flows throughout lives. And let me tell you, like, even being, you know, in my own life, in my own relationship, like, I'm not always feminine and my fiance is not always masculine. In my business, I'm not always feminine and or and versus masculine. Like, there are times when you need to know how to, like you said, ebb and flow and turn it on and turn it off. We should be like a thermometer. <laughs> Right? It is now time to <laughs> masculine energy. Like, flip the switch. <laughs> what can I do to change this? How can I balance it out? Yeah. And I guess that's what you are. You're the thermometer. Yeah. Going back to astrology, I am a Libra. So maybe oh, it does make yeah. sense that I'm all into this, like, balanced flow. Yeah. Just on a cloud. Yeah. Riding out life. I wish they could see what I'm doing right now. <laughs> because like, I feel like I talk with my body. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So do you feel like having an imbalance stems from anything in childhood or 100%. maybe, you know, your family, what just came out of my mouth, your familial situation or maybe some past trauma? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, it's a little bit of everything, right? It's being in a family system and seeing who, like, how did your mom show up? What was her role? What was your dad's role? You know, it's in that also f like nourishes your interaction between men and women too. It's society, right? Society plays a huge role on it because as women, we're really not, we're really not like, we're not really taught about what our feminine energy is. It's not encouraged to Let's take a break right now. Let's take a breath. Let's yeah. let's create and have fun and play. Let's be sensual and let's show like let's be sexy and sensual and like have a really like beautiful intimate moment with ourselves with our partner. Like that's a whole other conversation that we could talk that we can get into and talk let's about. Do it. But it's like <laughs> <laughs> but it's all of these qualities that are very deeply feminine that aren't seen as they're not they're not encouraged nor are they really embraced because women you know if a woman is to if a woman expresses herself and has needs she's called oh she's bossy she's a bitch if a woman is really is in touch with her sexuality not for anyone else but because it's a part of who we're who she is and makes her feel good and expressed and free Oh, she's a slut. Or, you know, a woman who is, <sighs> I can't think of something, but <laughs> you get the yeah. drift. <laughs> maybe even a mother. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, she has no social life. Yeah. She's always with her kids. Right. There's yeah. so much judgment and so many like taboos out there that, that women, we really play into. And same thing with men too. I don't want to. I don't want to leave men out. But it's still same thing with men. They have so many like judgments and 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 these these roles that they have to fit in. That you know, 
men aren't allowed to be vulnerable. Yeah. Men aren't allowed I can't to imagine share, that pressure. You know? Yeah. On yeah, on both both ends of it. Absolutely. So, so yeah. So it's society. It's your religion, right? I was brought up Catholic. So you don't have sex before marriage. You don't live with people before, you know, you you get married. Yeah. It's all of these these little these these little just ideas that get fed to you that just that you take on as okay like that's just how it is but in reality it's not and I feel like the people pleasing yes is a huge attribute due to societal pressures Mm -hmm. and this box that we're supposed to fit into Mm -hmm. and maybe what our parents or our friends expect out of us Mm -hmm. and feeling this immense guilt for not being able to show up for them or being able to be this certain type of person for them and I love how your therapist asked you well do you want to do that or do you actually like that or why are you doing this Mm -hmm. because nobody else's opinion should matter about how you construct your life in my personal opinion I don't know if (laughs) I'm sure you agree yeah oh my gosh a hundred percent yeah I think that yeah everything there is no right or wrong with anything Right. If you you want to show up on social media and post a picture in your bikini drinking a martini. Yeah. By all means, do it. But if you don't, that's OK, too. It's just we have these these judgments that that especially woman, woman and woman. Right. I feel like a lot of the work that I do. Yeah. OK. Women have have, you know, of course, we all have our, our things with men. But there's a lot of trauma between woman and woman and how women are really the people who are tearing each other down and who are judging each other and who aren't supporting each other when we should be the ones who are like the first ones in our corner. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's so important to be a girl's girl. Yeah. First and foremost, mm-hmm. because if you're not able to show up for the women in your community or in your circle or in your family, mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to show up for anyone. Yep. I think you should always show up first for yourself. And then you have to show up for, you know, the people that understand and resonate with you the most. And I think sometimes I just see time after time, women tearing each other apart and tearing each other down. Yeah. And it's just a bad reflection, honestly. Yeah. You know, if I'm hanging around a bunch of girls and somebody just brings up someone completely random and unrelated and, you know, they're not sitting in the room and they don't allow them to have a voice within the room and start tearing them apart, I immediately get turned off to this person. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing this to somebody when they're not in the room, I 100% know you're doing that to me when I'm not in the room. Yeah. And... Yeah, it's terrible. It's so terrible. I will say that I truly believe those people who tear other da- others down also tear themselves down, too. Mm-hmm. I truly, truly believe that. So it does give me, doesn't make it right, but it does give me compassion for them. Because I'm like, wow, if you do this to other people, you must really rip yourself apart. And that, that's awful. <laughs> yeah and I'm sure a lot of it is internal too yeah it's like yeah. this internalized insecurity that yeah, totally they can't totally. even release because mm-hmm. they don't have the confidence yeah. to do that yeah I think being outspoken and having that emotional maturity is such a release mm-hmm. and it frees you from everything in life yes. yes and that's so much why I did this started this feminine energy because I, I mentioned earlier is that you know, I had this feeling where it just lit me up, right? It just, it lit me up. But in reality, what I was looking for is just freedom. Yeah. And that, that, that liberation in your mind, body, and soul, that is just, you can't even explain it. It's just this, uh, it's just this exhale and it's beautiful. I love how you were like very in touch. <laughs> <laughs> in touch. I, I love how you're really in touch with sensuality mm-hmm. and being outspoken about that. Mm-hmm. And I actually saw that you have also done boudoir and oh, yeah. you have workshops with women where mm-hmm. you help them understand that sensuality and express mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to feminine energy and expressing your sensuality, mm-hmm. 
-hmm. What are some tips that you would give to somebody that is kind of scared of that word or is like, oh, what? Sensuality. <laughs> that's that's a scary term. You know, I think that there's a lot of people like that that are just afraid to even like be associated with it. Yes, yes. There's so much with sensuality. There's so much. Oh, where do I begin? <laughs> huh. So uh, my advice or what I suggest to women is to get yourself into one of my embodiment classes. <laughs> Shameless plug. But <laughs> you got to plug it. That's why you're here. <laughs> but but for real because it's you realize that it's no longer scary. When you are in a room with all women and they are seeing you at your most vulnerable, right? Because sensuality truly is just vulnerability. It has nothing to do with sex. It has to do with the fact that you are so deeply immersed in a moment that you just, that, that, it, ta that it overtakes your entire body and you feel just this, this bliss, come, like this bliss just flow throughout your entire body. So it's really not sex. It can be applied to sex, but it has nothing to do with sex. Right, like I could have a deeply sensual moment right now, just like <laughs> sipping your martini, mm -hmm. and it's just like, oh my god, like when it, oh that dirty martini when it just like hits my mouth, I'm just so present in that moment and deeply feel all of that in my body. That's really what sensuality is. Oh yeah, I was telling you on the way here, I stopped at a French restaurant, brought my Kindle. It's my A Court of Thorn and Roses book, which. <laughs> Oh my god, I haven't started reading. Which it does relate to sex, <laughs> by the way. But I'm literally in this cafe slash restaurant bistro, mm -hmm. and I have myself a glass of wine. I have a little app, and I'm reading my Kindle, enjoying my time alone. And I feel like that's a really great way to be present mm -hmm. and yeah. just spending just present, intentional time. Yes. Whether it's with yourself or with other right, people. Right, right. So you can do that with yourself. But I always say that do it with other people because it's one thing to do it by yourself. And we all need to be able to, to feel that within ourselves. However, I also feel that there is a connotation with sensuality that you have to keep it behind closed doors. So that's why I suggest women to come to my, my sensuality classes and my workshops because when you bring it out into the light, right? When you when you stuff something all the way behind closed doors, you kind of there's this this idea that it's very shameful. So when you bring it into the light in a safe space surrounded by the other woman in your, you know, in your community, you realize it's actually not scary. It's very liberating. It's very liberating. I had um in, so I do these sensual chair dance classes. It's like my my most popular embodiment classes that I do. And um, so your promo video for that is Fire Flame. I saw it today and I was jaw dropped. Girl, thanks. Slay a total slay. You guys have to go to Ali's page and look. It's iconic. Ah, oh, thanks. And by the way, that wasn't a boudoir shoot. That was literally that was my branding shoot. <laughs> I love that. I'm like, no, that had nothing to do with boudoir. That was literally just me on a Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I am boudoir. That is, yeah, that's the vibe. I love that. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry that in. Even whenever I did my boudoir shoot, uh -huh. I actually just had my photographer on the podcast, Kate Andrea. She's mm -hmm. amazing. I was so nervous to post those photos. Mm -hmm. So nervous. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy that I had some validity to it people saying that they were great and she is such an artist they are beautiful photos like she has such an eye mm -hmm. but I guess because it's something that I was never vulnerable with before maybe I had never posted something like that I felt this immense pressure just to put it out there but the moment I did I was just like hell yeah yeah and hell she yeah. just made me feel so confident yeah. so and they look amazing. Thank you. So amazing. Oh Slay, my god. We're all slaying. Hell yeah. Cheers to that. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> um, but oh my god, what was I? What was I saying? You were talking about your chair dancing mm. classes, your sensual chair dancing yes. classes, and just other tips mm -hmm. about people like tapping into that sensuality. Yes. So in the last chaired class that I did, I had 
um, a woman who came and she said, she was like, you know what? I didn't take this class for so long because I thought the chair was so intimidating. But I, uh, but I realized that it wasn't the chair. It was the sensuality part. It was that vulnerability piece, right? And that's like, that makes me makes me feel a lot of things but it's like we we just we're afraid to show that part of ourselves because of whatever people have told us or society has told us we're afraid of the judgment we're afraid of just being seen and that just but you know what the funniest part of that is I don't know if you relate to this but I always get the highest vibrations. I sound like so LA <laughs> vibrations <laughs> from people that share things with me that are vulnerable or mm-hmm. things that I can relate to that people are scared to talk up about. It immediately makes me flock to them because it shows that they are not afraid to be themselves, but they're also confident people that are going to bring me good energy too. Yeah. And I love just surrounding myself with that type of energy because it just makes the whole room light up. And vulnerability is contagious. It really is. Because when one person opens themselves up, it gives everyone else permission to do the same. So when you have that courage to open up your heart, to share your authentic self, which includes your sensuality, your woo-woo-ness and your intuition, it's your creativity and you know, all of the beautiful feminine aspects of yourself, it gives other women permission to do the same. Yeah. That's why. When it comes to dating, everybody's always like, you need to be mysterious. I feel like there's some sensuality to that, being mysterious, Mm -hmm. but also vulnerability is Mm -hmm. a big part of sensuality as well. Yeah. So how do you feel like, from an expert's opinion, what the timeline of that should be like oh like at the beginning like you have to be mysterious or do you even think that that's a thing okay I'm just I'm laughing at this <laughs> because the first date with my now fiance I literally sat down and I was like tell me all of your childhood trauma <laughs> I was tell, like, me let's, everything. tell me everything I was like let's cut to the chase I have no time to waste <laughs> I love that but he was like yeah let's do it like and that's why we like got along but you know I do think that there is an aspect of like you know, people need to earn your vulnerability. They do. So there is an aspect of, you know, I'm not saying to go on a first date and be like, this is like, you know, let me just pour my entire heart out because people need to, that is really sacred stuff and people need to kind of prove themselves in order to share that. But that doesn't mean that on a first date that you can express how you're feeling I really don't like the fact that everyone's like, oh, you can't, you know, you can't, you know, what's, what's some like outdated dating beliefs? Oh, you have to wait like three days before you reach out or like you have to play hard to get or something. It's like, no, if you feel that in your body, if you feel in that moment that this is what you want to do, you want to text them. If you want to say, you know what, I had such a great night and I hope to see you again, then do that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's really important to ask them about themselves too. So I love that the first thing you said to your now fiance is tell me everything. (laughs) Because I feel like there's so many times where people go into dates and just blab the entire time about themselves. Yeah. So I think being like a listening ear Mm -hmm. and having somebody share that vulnerability first is a really cool thing because it gives you the opportunity to open up as well. Yes. And you also want to be memorable, right? Like, yeah. I don't want to just go into a date and think it was the most bland, boring person ever that just didn't tell me anything, <laughs> you know? I know. So, or just, like, kept it, like, really uneasy and weird. I know. And, like, didn't tell me anything. I know. Well, so. I think the most memorable part about a person is their heart. I agree. Because you really can feel someone's heart. You can feel, and when you put your heart out there, people feel that. And if they don't feel it or if they don't like it they're not for you yeah fuck them yeah fuck them <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> love that well if there's any last minute things before we get into the rapid fire rapid fire feel free Ooh, to share. Uh, 
Oh my god. Wait, I'm nervous for the rapid fire. Oh. Do I need another drink for this? Yeah. Here, we can take a little sip. <laughs> no, I don't have any other last minute tidbits that I want to share. Okay, amazing. Well, maybe we'll unlock them. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you're making me so nervous. I just looked at you with like the craziest eyes ever. God, I need to like. It's really not that crazy. Okay. okay. How is embracing femininity in. <laughs> I have not had a martini on this episode or on this show for a long time. Oh my time, God, I'm so, so excited. It's hitting me hard. <sighs> okay. Number one. How has embracing femininity influenced your personal life and relationships? So I will tell you that after my whole episode, the train episode, the infamous train episode, um, I took a break from dating. At the time, I was in a narcissistic relationship, and he was not very nice, um, for lack of a better term. And I literally took a, a whole year off of dating because I was like, I need to figure me out before I move forward because like clearly I'm not you know one I just needed to re you know recalibrate my cleanse energy. yourself Clen of literally him. clean literally <laughs> Palo oh Santo God. seriously everywhere shoving shoving sage in places yeah. that I can't say on this podcast. scrubbing your house with it <laughs> no. but I truly took a year off of dating and really focused on myself and after that year it's so funny because like I I I consciously had this moment where I was just like, I don't want to date. And then I remember I was outside. I was on a walk with a friend. And I was like, you know what? I did so much healing with myself. I'm ready to heal with a partner. And it was just this like internal knowing of just like, yeah, I'm ready to heal with a partner. But once I got to that, you know, that space of understanding myself, understanding who I am, right? Because you can't share and be vulnerable if you don't know who you are. Once I got to that space, the dating game changed for me. I met the best men and even some men who were literally like, you are amazing, but like, I just, I just don't think that I'm, I, I can, not that they're, not that they're putting you on a pedestal because I don't want to say that, but it was, but they're just like, your awareness is really confronting for me and I can't do this. And I was like, wow, like that to me was like, okay, they're naturally, I'm not attracting them. I'm quote unquote repelling them because they just, they were able to see something in me that they weren't able to see, that they were seeing something in me that was a lack in themselves. And they're like, you know, with all due respect, like I, I I just don't think that I can be a part of this. I was like, well, thank you. Like, thanks for doing me that favor instead of, you know, getting into a relationship, all this stuff. But something as simple as that was very, was very empowering for me because it was just like no BS, no like power struggle. It was just, it naturally would fall away. And then I just be me. Yes. And then at the same time, I met some incredible incredible men who were so they themselves were open and they themselves were just so good-hearted people and then you know it wasn't until of course as I'm going out dating you know that's when I met my fiance which was I met in some other crazy way I actually manifested him but <laughs> well you need to give us the scoop on that I, know, I can't end on that right <laughs> Of course, I waited till the end of the podcast to say that. Oh, no. Go for it. <laughs> We're not at the end yet. Oh, hell yeah. So as during my year, my year of, of self-discovery, um, I would write all the time. I love to write. That was like one of the things that I found about myself. It's so, it's so crazy because in high school, I was like, I hate reading. I hate writing. In college, like, I don't want to take a writing course. It's awful. But then as I got older, I was like, wow, I actually have so much, so much to say. Like, and I just, I love writing. So I wrote, I still write, like, and I journal every single day. Um, but I would write all the qualities that I wanted in a man. I wanted someone that I could heal with. I wanted someone who was, who can match, you know, who is my divine counterpart, my masculine counterpart to balance out my feminine energy. 
I wanted, you know, really tapped into the feeling of what I wanted in a partner. I wanted that safety, that security, so I could literally fly and flourish in my feminine energy. And then, <laughs> weirdly, I um, was out with one of my girlfriends. We were like, we were all together, and she was like, Allie, I think I found your soulmate. Like, I think I found the perfect person for you. And she was randomly out at a bar and ran into my fiance. They connected and somehow, and my fiance is very, you know, into spirituality himself. He's very, he's a Reiki master. He's like very. I love. Yeah, he's very, he's a emergency room nurse. So he's just like a, he's a healer by nature, which is ironic. I was oh, like, I want yeah. a healer. And he's a healer. Yeah, so they, like, really connected on, on that level. And then, yeah, and she was like, Allie, I think I, like, met your fiancé. I met your soulmate. I met your soulmate. So it was like, even though I was out, I was on the apps, I was doing all the things, it was like the universe still responded to, to me and what I wanted, but just in a way that I wasn't expecting. That is the coolest story ever. Yeah. Well, I think that's giving everybody a lot of faith Aww. in humanity, <laughs> in you, destiny. Yeah, you should have faith. Yeah, you should, because there really are so many amazing, amazing, amazing men and women out there. There really are. You just gotta, you just gotta be able to see it. Yeah, it's not that they're not there. I think that they're always there. We sometimes just can't see it because yeah. we're blinded by our. Or own they just stuff. haven't shown up yet. Or they just haven't shown up. Yeah, I love it's that. funny though. So what advice do you give to clients who want to infuse more femininity into their day-to-day -day routines? Like, What's like a part of their routine that they could implement to just increase their femininity and that vibration? So the thing that resonates most with me is free-flowing movement. So I know that, you know, I like to work out, I like to go to the gym and like to do the things, but sometimes there's something to be said about not having a goal, not having, you know, I have to, I have to run this many miles and this time and I have to do this. Just move your body, whether that's put on a song and dance, whether that is go for a run, but like, don't time yourself. Don't worry about your pace. Just enjoy, just open yourself up, move your body. Maybe it's just doing some yoga or stretching. For me, that is what brings me because that because it brings me so deeply back into my body so that is a way that really resonates with me something that also I I tell people to do is create just create not not for anything but just for fun if you like to write write if you like to paint paint if you like to dance choreograph like just if you like to cook, oh my God, I love to cook. Just like, don't even follow a recipe. Just like, figure it out. Let it come to you. And those are usually the best dishes that I make. Oh yeah, that's like my love language. <laughs> that's like my favorite thing. Oh, it's the best. I love being like, just chefing it up in the yeah. kitchen. Yeah. A lot of people don't like it. Really? Yeah. I've, I've learned that recently. Yeah. A lot well, of people hate it. Yeah. Well, you know why? Because it actually forces them to like, think and not forces them to feel. I don't want to say it forces them to think. It forces them to feel. Because you can't just sit there and think like, oh my God, what should I do? What should I do? You have to react. You have to react. You have to be open to, you know, whatever you're meant to cook. Yeah, shifting gears. Yeah. And just seeing what go happens. with it. It yeah. could taste horrible. Right. But as time goes on, yes. you keep practicing and reacting. Yeah. You gotta make like a Michelin star dish. Hell yeah. <laughs> So I would say to create, to move your body, get in your body, to create, to, you know, I feel like there are just so many, so many ways to go tap into your feminine energy. But I think those are two really, yeah, really easy ways to do it. I have a friend that has a morning dance party with herself in the mirror every morning. She puts on like an early 2000s playlist and Love it. just dances her ass off. Love it. I listen to music every morning my airpods in and i listen to music and it changes every single day it, it changes on what type of music but any but i just literally I, sometimes i flow with it sometimes i sway with it sometimes i literally just like express with it it just it 
gets you back into your body. It opens you up. It releases, you know, any bullshit that you have, but it also opens you up to any anything that you're supposed to hear. Amazing. Well, going off of that, yeah. Favorite song. <laughs> Something from Beyonce. Love. Beyonce's my girl. Beachella, um, incredible. Uh, Beachella is incredible. Renaissance. It's an amazing unreal. album. It is. The Renaissance concert was, and it was another level. It was an experience. She's is, iconic. She is iconic. So I would say something with something Beyonce. Probably anything Beyonce is my favorite song. She's so good. <laughs> favorite song Beyonce. Period. Just Beyonce. <laughs> yes. Anything. So. If you could describe the essence of feminine energy in three words, what would they be? Who did you get these questions from? They're so good. Oh, are they? Yeah. Wow. They're going to laugh when I tell you. <laughs> Chat GBT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I may be a feminine embodiment coach, but I work smart too. So oh, it's not about working but hard. I also working ask it a million questions before I get like the actual answer that I want. I don't just ask it once. I ask it like a million times. I'm like, can you implement a little bit more of this? A little bit more of this, but it's bad because I probably should use a little bit more of my brain power. But <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you gotta do what we gotta do. Um magnetizing. Read it again. If you could explain the essence of feminine energy in three words, what would they be? So I would say powerful, because it truly is powerful force. It is magnetizing, because it draws people in. And yeah, the last one that came to me is just love. Oh, amazing. Yeah. It's it truly is just, just living from a space of, of love. Amazing. Yeah. Two more questions. Who is your role model that inspires you to play into a more feminine way of living? Can I say Beyonce again? Yes. <laughs> Can I say Beyonce? You can 100% for every. Yeah, yeah Beyonce. No, just kidding. I'll, I'll, yeah. Every question. But I am, I truly am going to say Beyonce because there is something that I truly love about her. And yes, she is, you know, a very successful woman, but she is so devoted to her masculine. She is so devoted to her feminine energy and making sure that you know she is fully expressed and she is she literally she is Beyonce like she she doesn't try to fit herself into anyone else's mold she truly shows up authentically and vulnerably even if it ruffles some feathers because she's like nope that's just me but she also she Okay. So did you see the Renaissance concert? I haven't. Okay. I'm sad. Okay. Uh, I know. Yeah. That was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, anyway. So um, so in the beginning, right, Beyonce can hit the, the most incredible notes. But you know what she did in the beginning? It was just her, the microphone, and she sang ballads. And there is something so powerful about the fact that you don't have to be this, like, you know, force of nature, hitting the notes and doing all these crazy dances. You can take up just as much space in that stadium, being alone and just singing and being vulnerable and graceful. And it's just so beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Okay. If you were to drink a martini in a bikini, where would you be and what would you be drinking? Oh, gosh. I would be on the south of France. And I would be in a red bikini. And I would be drinking a dirty martini and just, like, soaking in just 
the entire vibe and just uh just loving life feet in the sand feet in the sand now i see myself on a lounge chair okay so a <laughs> lounge chair yeah just like drinking my martini and just maybe a floppy hat and uh i would also like to do that yes that's what i would do i'll be joining you please do <laughs> so please feel free to share with the listeners how they can be your friend how they can work with you, maybe any fun launches or events or exciting things coming up. And yeah. Sure. So you could find me at Unleash Your Empress at Gmail. Wait, no. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Unleash Your Empress because we are all empresses and we just need need a little need a little boost to unleash it, which is what I'm here for. Um you can find me at UnleashYourEmpress.com. And one of my next um, embodiment classes that's coming up is my, my very popular central chair dance class on Friday, November 17th in Garden City. And yeah, a bunch of other fun, fun things in the works. So keep an eye out. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I feel like I learned so much from you and you are just so radiant and... I love that you are just such a great inspiration on how to live your best life by being your just utmost self and having your passions and just riding that energy. And I'm just so happy that you were able to come on today, Abby. Oh, thank you so much. This was so fun. Yes. And I appreciate you very much. Absolutely. Well, all right, guys, with my crackly lost voice, remember to like, rate, and subscribe to this podcast if you like this episode. Follow Allie, keep in touch with her, see what events she has. She has them all the time and is such a badass. She's here in New York City. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Truly, most of the time, you are not there for no reason and you're not where you are for no reason and you have to just remind yourself that and that's what I remind myself and then I feel a little bit better. Think of what you can do to just slow down your heart rate, make yourself feel a little better, going on a walk, meditating, Pilates class. You're manifesting, you're setting yourself up to start that journey of whatever you're manifesting. So I